Hi guys, I'm Dave, and this is Beer Virtually. Today we have a beer from Six Point. This is Six Point's High Res. This is in their limited release um, line. This is an IPA. We're going to make this episode all about IPAs and IBUs. There's a couple things about this beer. Cool color, just a uh, light amber color. All these IPAs I've noticed have a very similar profile. This looks a hair darker than the American that we had. Give me a great color, a little bit of head. I'm imagining there's gonna be some lacing in this beer too, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Just by, just, just based on my uh, experience with hoppy beers and what they're made of. A lot of times that's what adds to uh, lacing. So there's some really cool, um, I guess branding you would call it with this. So on the back it says, it's I-I-I-P-A. So that is, it's also an 11.1% beer. So that kind of, um, it's just kind of that, that marketing is kind of throughout the whole throughout the whole packaging and whatnot of this beer. Let's take the first sip. That is good. Way more mellow than I expected. This beer is 11.1% and it does definitely not taste like an 11.1% beer. Something really noteworthy about this beer is it is 115 IBU. That is by far the highest beer we have reviewed here on the channel. And this may be the highest IBU beer I have ever tasted. And I expected a real kind of like hopsecutioner, real hoppy, but it's actually way more mellow than I expected. Some of that may be due to the malty color. Sometimes the malt can really mellow out the hops. You can tell by like the great kind of amel, amber caramely color that it's uh, that it does have a, a good malt content that would be that that would mellow that hops out. So here's some other things about it: um, eleven ninety nine a four pack, not cheap, but not not crazy. Traditionally, the IBU scale goes from one to a hundred. And then of course, if somebody says this is the limit, people want to break that limit, right? Say the speed limit's 70, we want to go 75. Yeah, you know how that goes. So I did a little research on IBU, and there's only a couple beers that are even that are over this. I've saw, I think there's a couple that are in the 120, 125 range, um, from what I've seen, and maybe some home brews that people really go crazy. And I also did some research on how they measure IBU which I've brought up on the channel many times that I'm curious about. So I finally went in and did some research. So hops contain what's called alpha acids. And when the hops are boiled, these acids are released from the beer. So the longer the hops are in, are being boiled, the more bitter they get. And that's like it, it turns almost, you know how like when you cook onions, they go from being um, sharp or bitter to sweet. Hops are the opposite. They, they go from being flavorful to just more bitter. A lot of herbs in general will do that. But, um, so as the hops are boiled, the acids become isomeritized and the IBU scale is a measurement of those isomeritized alpha acids. It's a lot of nerd science stuff, but. So some beers like Budweiser has an IBU of about seven. Very, very low. Um, I'm sure Keystone, Keystone Light is way, way down there as well. They had that back in, you know, 20 years ago, they had that bitter beer face, uh, 
those bitter beer face ads, and that, that, that was really funny. Um, other beers, like, um, there's a beer called Avery IPA, which is around 70. Um, another beer called Maharaja. Um, it's an Imperial IPA, it's around 100. This high res is 115. And I got this article off of uh, Beer Guys, or one of those, and I, I got a couple of articles, and we kind of disseminated them for you guys. Um, so, the IBUs is, is a chemical measurement of how much of those isomeritized alpha acids are in the beer. There's also a thing called oxidized alpha, acid, alpha, alpha acids, polyphenols, and a few other things that make the beer taste bitter. This does not taste bitter. There is a hoppiness that I've mentioned before, for me, kind of just sits on the back of your tongue. Like once the once you swallow and you have the the finishing flavor, it kind of it goes from mouth to taste to to finish. The hop profile just kind of sits on the back of your tongue and kind of doesn't go away. Kind of I can still taste it now, you know, ten seconds or so after my last sip. It just kind of sits back there and and, and hovers. Um, but it's not. This is this is less hoppy than. Um, than like say heavy lifting that I just did from Boulevard. This is less hoppy and more drinkable, I would say, than that. Next, uh, either next up or very shortly, I'll be doing um, Resin, which is also an IPA from Six Point, and that is one of my favorite IPAs. Very cool can. This is uh, Six Point has these tall skinny cans, almost like uh, Red Bull cans. Um, Scott loves Red Bull. So shout out to you, Scott. I um, I like companies that do their own thing as far as marketing, form factor, whatever it may be that sets them apart. And Six Point also has a great product. It's not just all marketing and flair. I mean, Six Point puts out some really good beers. I have definitely not experienced their whole line. Um, I hope to definitely dig in some more. Um, let's see what the back of the can here says. Uh, what does it take to amplify perception Man, this is hard to read this this uh, metallic can start by going microscopic on the hop cone and magnifying the lupulin flavor increase the resolution now you can see the flavor details in the big picture billions of hop particles condensed into a can to produce a creamy a massive beer that is high res. I like it. Um, this actually says it's it's 111 IBU. So maybe that's where they get the I I IPA. It's also an Imperial IPA um, because it is over eight percent. And I definitely expected more lacing, but maybe the maltiness is preventing that. I had a uh, hop slam earlier, and the lacing was crazy. I mean, the cover, the, the glass was just covered in lace. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was different than this. I think I enjoyed the hop slam a little bit more than this, but this is still very good. If you like hoppy IPAs, um you may find this not hoppy enough for you if you really like getting kicked in the mouth by a beer that being said also the, the hop slam i didn't find to be overly hoppy either i, I actually enjoyed the they had kind of a sweet finish that was almost a uh like an amaretto flavor finish on, on the hop slam which i maybe i'll review here on the channel it was very good the smell is Floral, hoppy, not real citrusy. I'm thinking there's no citra hops in front of me, I had a guess. This also has a little bit of that um, anisette smell, but not the flavor. Almost a, a hint of cherry and vanilla.
this is good. This is not, um, it's definitely not my favorite, but this type of beer, IPAs aren't my favorite in general. I enjoy IPAs. I enjoy probably the lighter IPAs. Um, I don't enjoy a bitter beer for the most part. Um, there are some beers called bitters. Like when I was in Australia, there's a beer called uh, VB, Victoria Bitter. And that's like their Bud Light or Budweiser. It's very, very popular. And I enjoyed that, but it's just like a drinking beer. It's not really like a, a, a sampling, tasting, savoring beer. At 11.1% at too, these would definitely creep up on you. That's funny. Everything online said 115 IBU, even on their website, I believe. More marketing, I guess. It says uh, on here, beer is culture. I kind of agree. If you look back over different societies, and I've traveled around probably more than your average person. Um, I've been uh, all through Southeast Asia and whatnot. And almost every area has their own beer. And it, it is indicative of the culture. It's, uh, you know, you go through like Malaysia where it's mainly um, Muslim or... Uh, Hindu and there's like beer is hard to find so when even even that is indicative of the culture when you do find it you find a certain fraternity of uh, guys that like beer and they're like it's kind of on the hush um, it's a little taboo even in those countries to, to drink alcohol so when you do come across somebody that drinks alcohol also it's a uh, you know there's a certain you know, Beer Brotherhood, I guess you'd call it. This this has gone down fairly easy. I, I thought this would be a little... I thought this would go down a little bit harder, but this has gone down pretty easy. That being said, I don't know that I would buy this again. It's just not really my cup of tea. But I can respect what they did here, and I can respect the quality of the brew. It's, uh, it's it's very clean. I don't get any weird, like, ancillary flavors. Or e even the aftertaste is, is fairly, fairly clean. Well, I hope I was able to explain a little bit about IBU to you guys. Um, if you have any questions about it, uh, shoot me a question in the comments, and I will, I'll see what I can do to answer it. Definitely not an expert, but I play one on the internet. So until next time, cheers.